Five years ago, I stopped taking work. Why? Because if I can't finish the project, I don't want to do it. And why did I say, perhaps we should try this one? There are many reasons. The most important reason, I think, is the father-son relationship. Now, I'll tell you why. Because Robbie's father, the ambassador, Jose Antonio, I've known for a long time. He has asked me to do a project for him for at least 15 years, and I've never found it possible for me to do it because Philippines is very far away. So when he came to me and talked about a project here, and he and his wife and the two boys came to see me in my office, they said, you know what? He said, I introduce you to my children, my sons. He said, I hope that the second generation will work together. I like them, very oriental. So because of that, I, see, I thought immediately of Sandy. Sandy and Robbie, they are, belong to the same generation. If they can work together, I'm very pleased. In fact, I told the ambassador that I think this sounds good to me. You know, we've had a special affinity with the Pei family for years. Um, it was an obvious choice for us, really, because, you know, I am Pei and, you know, Pei Partnerships have not really worked together on, on a collaborative effort to actually develop a high-end residential project in New York City. Um, it's a privilege to be working side by side with these two fine gentlemen. I say New York is the most exciting city in the world. It's not the most beautiful, it's the most exciting. Paris is more beautiful, London is more beautiful, but New York is exciting. It has life, I mean, it pulsates with life. I know New York City better than I knew my mother country. <laughs> with that, my China has changed since my days. I left China 70 years ago. But New York's constantly changing, and I'm here with the change. The people that live in different neighborhoods in New York have their own different tendencies and cultures. The Centurion is really at the epicenter of the verve and the energy of New York. On 56th Street, just by 5th Avenue, it embodies the essence of fashion, energy, music, culture, food, people, activity. And that's why New York and the Centurion are made for each other. Nobu 57, Michael, um, town, you know, restaurants and chamber, you know, restaurants and chamber hotel, Four Seasons, retail, I mean, you name it, we pretty much are three minutes away from it. Bergdorf Goodman, Barney, Saks Fifth Avenue, Prada, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Dior, um, the list is really endless. Um, you have the University Club, Met the Metropolitan Club, a couple of minutes away, a couple of blocks away, and, you know, Carnegie Hall, um, absolutely Central Park, I mean, probably the, the most brilliant gem in New York City. Centurion, Centurion is a, it's kind of a, a fun project for me. It's also, uh, there's, there's certain emotional content in it, which I mentioned earlier. It's a small project, it's in New York. It involves uh, my son and also my friend's son. The Centurion uh, is intended to be a landmark of Manhattan. And all of us on the team, uh, from the Pays, uh, the Antonio family, and myself, feel uh, the responsibility and the need to um, to exceed the standards that uh, that exist as far as expectations are concerned and to deliver for not only people who live in the building but people who live nearby the building uh, a piece of art. This in turn epitomizes subtle elegance situated in one of the best locations in New York City. With fewer than 50 apartments, this is acquiring an apartment in turn is like possessing a collectible. It's one of those rare units that you just have to have. Well, we've taken a holistic approach to this project because we really have an opportunity to address every single aspect of this project. 
and uh, and it is one of the reasons why we refer to it as a jewel box because it really is a as a as a as a discrete object that can be uh, can be dealt with in all manner of detail from the very largest elements to the very smallest ones. In this particular case, because the building is not a very tall building, we're in the middle of a block. We have only 100 feet frontage. We can only build 16 stories, so therefore it's a it's a small building. But because it is small, and I said earlier, the face becomes important because you want to see this building from Fifth Avenue. Can't be corner from Fifth Avenue, you're walking past while you're shopping at, at Winston for jewelry or whatever that. Maybe you want to look in and you want to see something. That angle, the building has to speak. Say, I am here. I chose French limestone instead of travertine because it's a better stone. It's a stronger stone and has a nicer color. I've used that stone many places, including the Four Seasons Hotel in New York. It's a, one of the best limestone in the world. And it's a quarry out of Burgundy. Robbie and Roy <laughs> asked me, is it expensive stone? I said, probably it is, relatively speaking. But compared with the overall cost of the project, it's not significant. I think you can afford it. <laughs> Detailing of the facade makes or breaks a design of a building. When you look at the building, and, 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 and see this, this cascade, this cascade effect. Then we introduced, we introduced uh, uh, these, we call them lanterns. There are five, five uh, double height spaces, unique features, which we imagine at nighttime will be beautiful when they're illuminated. They really will read like lanterns. My father calls them the face of the building. I think we're quite lucky to have Roy and Robbie. They're very open-minded, you know, and I, uh, I think I remember Roy asked me, what would you consider something you cannot give up in this project? <laughs> in other words, you got to have, you got to, and I mentioned a few things, and he stuck to it, and he has never questioned it. Roy and Robbie said, yes, let's try. If those are important to you, let's try and do it. I like that. You don't often find that in clients, you know, especially when developers are involved. Usually they count pennies, you know, then you have problems. I'm convinced that this is going to be a living experience that is not available anywhere within Manhattan, especially in this part of town. This is a new building which is rare for this location. It's virtually every floor has wound up being different. The, uh, the amount of variety in the number of units is uh, most unusual in a building that comprises fewer than 50 units. Uh, the maximization of space is also felt in the individual rooms. Uh, generously proportioned widths of living rooms and bedrooms. Uh, five fixture bathrooms, things that um, are above the standard that you would expect even in the luxury market as we perceive it. Building, quality. The location, unparalleled. The space in the apartments, the way they're configured, is something that cannot be matched within a 10 block radius that I'm aware of. It's a small building, it's, a, it's almost 50 unique apartments uh, rather than five or six that are repeated 15 or, or 10 times. And this makes it a very, very unusual and in a sense collectible building because no apartment is going to be the same. It takes a lifetime of sophistication to be simple. And that is one of the theories that is behind the Centurion. Simplicity that is born out of a lifetime of study and example and sophistication. We have created a, a, a truly a landmark on 56th Street and we think it can be a, one of the great buildings of New York City. Life. Life is architecture. And architecture is the mirror of life. <laughs>